for some more on the rapid growth of pro gaming. We're joined now by Nick and gamer Jared Krenzel. Hi to both of you. Let's start with you. Um, Nick, why did you decide to tackle this subject? It's probably, for a lot of our audience, I'm saying our older <laughs> audience, people like me, are totally unaware of this culture. Um, well, originally, when I was a lot younger, I probably played a lot of video games. Probably don't do that so much now because I'm very busy. And um, one thing which struck me as when I started watching guys like Jared play and found out about this scene myself, obviously I was interested in it because it was something that I used to do. And I found a common kind of stereotype that, you know, um, games are unfit, they're losers, they're overweight. And this was something that, which really frustrated me. And I thought this was a kind of a, a good message to dispel that. And one thing, I feel like this is a really strong stereotype. And I noticed um, in your introduction, you said this is something that will shock a lot of parents. And I don't think it should be um, uh, seen in that light, I guess. And so this was half of the message. Well, I, I guess because you, you, what you've said is that you know, the, the stereotypical uh, image of a gamer is someone who's stuck in a dark room, <laughs> doesn't see much light, doesn't eat well, uh, and perhaps is, is a bit of a social recluse. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what some people who have uh, vaguely heard heard about what I do, that's the first thing that jumps to their mind. But uh, I think there's, uh, there's different types of gamers. When it gets to professional gaming, you're playing competitively, and it's, it's very similar to any other competitive event. To think quickly, to be on your feet, and uh, to be able to move your hands so quickly, you've got to be on the ball. You've got to eat healthy, you've got to exercise. So yeah, I think I uh, definitely don't fit into that stereotype <laughs> for sure. Well, I'm fascinated. I had no idea about the professional video gaming um, world, so to speak, and uh, of course um, that the fact that you know there are international competitions, Australia is trying to get up there. Um, how are we faring compared to the rest of the world? Um, I'd say we are a few years behind everyone else. Um, there are you know issues like the internet. Hopefully, when the NBN gets in, that'll uh, do us a few favours. Um, but besides that, I think we're definitely starting to catch up. Uh, there's more and more tournaments starting up around Australia. There's all sorts of events, uh, more and more money, and I think with StarCraft 2 especially, it's kind of revolutionising it because it's a much better spectator sport. A lot of other esports are games where you're watching kind of a first-person view, but watching a game of StarCraft, you can see uh, it's kind of like watching a poker game. You can see all the cards both players have, and you can see the trickery going on and the uh, the insane skill and speed that they actually play at. Is this a legitimate career path for someone like you? <laughs> How much money you can make out of this? Um, uh, the best players in the world, uh, you know, they are winning tournaments of $90,000. Um, that's kind of the, the top you'd get to. The top earners in terms of uh, winnings over the past uh, a couple of years have earned, you know, $300,000, $400,000 a year. Someone around my level, it's much lower. I'm just starting out, to be honest. Uh, and being in Australia, it's, it's nowhere near that amount. But there's all sorts of things you can do. There's some players who, just through their popularity, without even winning that many tournaments, charge $300 an hour just for coaching. So Nick, you uh, obviously uh, were involved in this on the periphery, I suppose, in terms of the video gaming world, and that got you started in terms of putting together this story. Is there more that we need to know about this mysterious world? Um, well, involved myself on the periphery just as a spectator, because after doing this documentary I got really interested and now I watch it. Um, I think probably there's not too much to know about the Australian scene, perhaps, besides something that might interest you, is something called Barcraft. I'm not sure if you've heard about this because the segment's been on. But at the Paragon Hotel in Circular Quay, there's around every few months they have a Barcraft event, which is when they play this particular video game on the screens, and lots of people go to the pub. Usually they get around 400, 500 people. And, um, yeah, it's quite a big event. Now, they're actually colleges or even pseudo-universities set up, I'm talking about Korea, um, South Korea, where uh, actually developed graduates of, of gaming, is that right? Um, yeah, you could say that. It's, it's kind of more of a, just a college setup. It's not like there's, there's any um, lectures or class. There are professional coaches. I suppose Jared would probably be a better question there to, I mean, better person to answer this question. Um, yeah, basically you've got players living in team houses where they can practice, they can wake up every morning, practice all day, their coaches will run them through all sorts of strategies, they'll watch games and analyse them together. And it's this entire career path which they build up, they build up their level, they end up you know, building up their celebrity and uh, later on they go on to commentate, coach, work hosting events and that sort of thing. So it really is a legitimate career path. Maybe we need something like that for journalism. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to have a 
probably a harder time than Jared to break into my industry. Well, maybe making a bit less money too, I would have thought, yes. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Absolutely. All right then. Well, thank you both for introducing us to the wonderful world of video Pleasure. gaming. Thank you. Thanks.